Jesus Christ said, they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me would be loved my by my Father, and I will love them, and I will reveal myself to them. God loves each one of us, and he has permitted his word to be proclaimed. And through his grace, he gives each one of us the ability to receive his word and to treasure his word in our hearts. He who loves us constantly seeks to save us from all forms of evil and danger, especially the choice of sin that we could make. Sin destroys us and wounds us deeply, taking away from us the life of God, destroying us internally, and turning our hearts away from this God who loves us. Separated from God, we make a choice through sin to separate ourselves from God and therefore we forget what it means to be loved by God and the very purpose for which he has sent us into this world in a mission of his love. But he doesn't withdraw himself from us. He comes with his grace, with his power, with his word to remind us of who he is, a God who saves. The commandments of God show us what is sin. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we begin to realize the futility of sin and that God's grace is being poured upon us and is with us to help us to return to him. Not only to receive the blessing that we seek, but more importantly, to become a blessing into this world that he has sent us for. A relationship with God is first and foremost. And sin first breaks down this barrier by turning us away from God. Therefore, Jesus emphasized saying that the first and greatest commandment is to love God with our whole heart, with our whole soul, with our whole mind. He emphasized to choose God first. Through this reply to the Pharisee, he speaks of a relationship with God in which alone a human being is whole, body, mind, and soul. We must be healthy, body, mind, and soul. And this happens only in union with this God who loves us. And the first three commandments of God is a yes to God and his love. We should not see it in any other way. We are saying yes to God and his love. A God who is waiting to restore us to the completeness of his love. We have the Ten Commandments through which we begin to see what sin really is. Grave sin. What we call mortal sin where we make a choice to reject God and his love. If you read the Bible carefully, you will find God constantly recalling to his people, 
Hear, O Israel, hear, listen. Listen to my voice and not to any other deceptive voice. That was the choice Adam and Eve made, listening to deception and failing to see and to obey God's word. Do not choose to sin was all that God said. Through an analogy, do not eat of the fruit of that tree. Today, it's an invitation to help us to see how are we living, where do we stand? After having sinned, Adam and Eve chose to hide themselves. They made a choice to run away from God. But God never ran away from them. He was still with them. And he asked them this question, where are you, Adam? Where are you, Eve? So I could make a choice to stay away from God and sin makes me do that. God by recalling the covenant of his love, his word, his commandment, is inviting every one of us back into his merciful love. And we need to make a choice. Through the Holy Spirit, everyone who is open to God and his word will begin to allow the Holy Spirit to work within us. The word working within us. To show us our sins, the letter to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit. It is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. With this, let us listen to God in the first commandment. I read from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 6 and following. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. Here is God revealing the purpose for each one of us to remain free. He liberates, as we see in the context of the liberation of the Israelites, who were slaves for centuries in Egypt. And being conditioned to this slavery, they did not really understand what it means to live in freedom. Today, we claim a lot of freedom and we believe we are free. We decide what freedom is, what is right, what is wrong. And here in the first commandment, God declares, I am the Lord, your God. I have brought you out of your slavery, out of your bondage. Did God just do it with mere words? Or did he not just come down to us? To help us out of this slavery of sin. The gift of the Father in Jesus Christ, the Son. Who took our human condition. Taking upon him the whole sin of humanity. And in total obedience to the Father. He goes up to his throne, the cross. For each one of us is at cross purposes with God. But he chose to be totally obedient to the Father. And St. Paul describes him taking the form of a slave. Not, not taking into consideration all that he is. He emptied himself taking the form of a slave. 
to free you and me through the gift of redemption through his precious blood on the cross he bows his head down shedding his blood fully saying it is accomplished sin is destroyed on mount calvary through this eternal sacrifice jesus who is buried rises up on the third day throws open the gates of heaven by ascending into heaven seated at the right hand gifting us the holy spirit through whom we have the ability to love god the father through jesus christ his son praise the lord god's love is poured into our hearts through the holy spirit jesus emphasizes that whoever commits sin is a slave to sin john 8:34 he goes on to say that a slave does not have a place in the household he's referring to the household of god it is the son alone who has a place in the household and this son is jesus christ praise the lord who has restored our sonship and daughtership when we are united to him and he is the lord and god of our lives when i say jesus you are my lord and my god i'm submitting to his authority i realize that my freedom is only in him the freedom to love the father the freedom to choose what is good what is never evil sin is evil and wherever sin is there is the absence of truth there is the absence of everything that is beautiful there is the absence of everything that is good sin mars us the mangled body of jesus on the cross speaks to us look at yourselves in human condition but i give myself up that you may choose to rise with me to rise out of sin if you permit me and that is when jesus is the lord and god of my life when i have chosen nothing else in this world above this god who is love because anything else in this world not only a thing but even a human being or a desire in me that is so passionate can become an idol in my life that i place above god the idolatry of power is so much in us and you could see it in your homes why right at the beginning in the bible you will find adam seeking an excuse for choosing to sin and his wife was his excuse his wife god asked him did you choose to sin have you eaten of that tree adam who till then looked at his wife and was able through the holy spirit to say you are the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh i believe he began to say o oh wife you are the knife in my life after he chose to sin praise the lord wife you are the knife in my life love at home becomes love for material things how much is talked up at home honey i love you for your money like honey in the rock sweet honey in the rock we sing in church but have we turned it to understand that jesus is this treasure have we permitted him to reign over our craving and who is greater at home mother in law or daughter in law what is the law l a w love alone works we need to allow god to infuse us with this and today is an invitation for us pope emeritus benedict 16th said the sad reality of the world today is the indifference to sin 
the grave danger in taking sin lightly and to allow sin to become a modality of our everyday lives remember life itself is a gift from this god who wants us to have this life and today he invites us out of all the idols that we have built many of you seated here could begin to take alcohol very lightly and therefore you move from red label to black label you'd find yourself only unstable in life instability johnny walker is the talker in so many people's lives from single malt you can no more afford single malt so you want double malt go down to alcohol and your life will just be a somersault somersault salting salting today God invites us come out of all of this turn your hearts from selfish gain if Jesus is the center of our lives we cannot be afraid of the future because the future is eternal life in Jesus Christ a christian is never afraid of the future king david centuries before jesus christ was born said even though i walk through the darkest valley you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me praise the lord jesus christ said the ruler of this world is coming but he has no power over me so anyone united to jesus christ recognizes that there is no power in black magic looking after or running after something in this world to know the future when will i get married when will my husband really start loving me when will my spouse begin to love me husband or wife when will this home turn into a harmonious home it's not lying with a frog or a parrot or in astrology or palmistry because god has put into our hands human hands power over everything in nature he's called us to be stewards genesis 1:28 tells us that you have power you have dominion over everything in this world yet there are some of us who run after black magicians palmistry astrology and seek to allow ourselves to grow in what we believe in life through these people wizards and mediums it's a call of god if we have done such things to turn away from all such back to god the living god hallelujah and to worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah first commandment the second commandment you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the lord your god for the lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name joseph is told that his name will be jesus and this name means he will save his people from sin matthew 121 we go further into verse 23 matthew 123 and we read he is emmanuel god with us he is with me in my sin not to keep me in my sin but waiting for my response to seek his help that i may turn back to the merciful father through the mercy that is being poured upon us through jesus christ each time we confess lord lord we are confessing a reality the need to permit him to be a lord Lord I have misused your name on so many occasions I have taken sin so lightly and I say I have no sin inside me that's a sin misusing God's name there are many people who shudder to go for a confession saying look at that priest I know him very well we know others very well but we do do we know our hearts praise the lord hallelujah everyone is given 
a ministry. We ourselves, each one of us, is given a ministry at home in a certain manner. Priest, ministerial priesthood to administer the sacrament of confession. He or she has a human nature that is inclined to sin and can fail and fall. But the mercy of God enables this priest to return to God through his own confession. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need to make use of the invitation of God through what he has gifted us. Because it is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that we are absolved of our sins when we confess them and confess the need for a Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. A Christian understands that whenever we use the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, God is present as he is. Is he holy? Is God holy? Is he all truth? Is he always faithful? Is he the complete truth and nothing but that truth? And does the truth come to us through his body, the church? Praise the Lord. So whenever we use God's name, God is present. Some of these attributes we know Examine ourselves, let us examine ourselves and see where all have we failed and misused God's name and have the humility to confess. I don't have sin, is so common. The word of God reminds us if we say we have no sin in us, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Jesus Christ the liar and his word is not in us. Let's examine the numerous times when we have sat back saying, No, Lord, I have no sin. May the Holy Spirit through this word, the word of God, help us to see deep within our hearts. And this sin that is being brought out is what God wants us to be saved from now, all of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The third commandment says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days you shall labor, do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord. In it you shall not do any work. The Sabbath day for us is Sunday. And the Hebrew word Sabbath means rest. Praise the Lord. Why is Sunday the Sabbath day for us? Because Jesus Christ rose up on Easter Sunday. And he instituted the Eucharist which is a Greek word. Eucharist means thanksgiving. We thank the Father and through Jesus we offer a sacrifice through which we are redeemed from sin. Praise the Lord. An eternal sacrifice. In this pandemic, we could not have a sacramental communion. But God in his merciful love had allowed technology to be used to bring us a spiritual communion through our screens. Yes? Yes or no? For many people, today is, it has become a screen age. Screen age. Selfie. Even in the most dangerous places, we forget everything else around. Praise the Lord. We forget even the banquet of the Lord. An invitation and a promise. Blessed are you. Blessed are you when you participate in this banquet of the Lord. A command of the Lord when he instituted the Eucharist to his apostles. Do this in memory of me. Luke twenty-two nineteen. 19. 
It's a command of the Lord. And recalling the new covenant in his blood. Raising up the cup, he said, this is the cup of my blood. The blood that is going to be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And you'll find a fulfillment of this in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. On the day of Pentecost, Sunday, Pentecost. The same day on the gifting of the law. The Ten Commandments gifted on Mount Sinai. Today we receive through this the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is no more this law that guides us, but the law of the Holy Spirit that helps us to see the real depth of the Ten Commandments fulfilled in Jesus Christ, who said, do you think I have come to abolish the law? No. I have not come to abolish the law. I have come to fulfill the law. Not one stroke of the letter will pass away until all is accomplished. Matthew 5, 17. And Jesus fulfills this. That is his cry from the cross. It is accomplished. It is fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, how do we celebrate the day of the Lord? It is central to Christian life. Eucharistic celebration is central to Christian life. And receiving Holy Communion, we receive in a state of grace after examining our conscience. And St. Paul warns us on how we receive Holy Communion. Let's remember, the prayer of the priest is, Lord, as I eat your body and drink your blood, let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and body. Lord, keep me safe for eternal life. Hallelujah. Judas ate with the twelve at the Last Supper. Yes or no? And Satan entered him. John 13, 27. Receiving Holy Communion with serious mortal sins in us, one of which is deliberately not going to church on Sundays and days of obligation, speaking ill of God, and neglecting the Sabbath, we will never rest. We will be restless because our only rest is in God who is our fulfillment. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 30, St. Paul warns us that when we eat and drink of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we eat and drink and we are responsible for this body and blood of Christ. We should never condemn ourselves against God's love by receiving it in a state of disgrace or mortal sin. God enables us to be able to confess and receive in genuineness. Therefore, we can pray, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Promise. A promise. Sickness is not just in our physical bodies, in our minds, in our hearts, in our thinking, in the way we believe what is right and wrong. And here is God gifting us his own body and blood that we may become him in this world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew 12, 8. It's time that we permitted him to be Lord, not just of the Sabbath, but every day of our lives. But on the Sabbath day, we understand that we need to seek a rest in him and to rest close to his heart always and allow his heart to become our hearts. Allow his mind to become our minds. Hallelujah. To become his life, our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fourth commandment. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So this commandment looks like it's addressed only to children of a certain age. The reality is we are all of an age that we are still children of the Heavenly Father. Do you believe? Praise the Lord. However, I would address one area. 
parents. What does it mean to be a father, to be a mother? Isn't it an honor to be a father and a mother to these children that God could have gifted you? How are you living your lives as father and mother? Is your home filled with the television becoming a reality? WWF, World Wrestling Federation. And children watch awestruck that the father is striking his wife or the other way around. The wife on the husband, Mary Com. Words fly out of this mouth. Who speaks more, men or women? Men, says somebody. Hallelujah. I will ask my friends, men, I'm also part of you. Who speaks more, men or women? Women, they're boldly saying it, women. Hallelujah. Well, in reality, according to statisticians, Women speak 20 times more than men, they say. They say that. I don't know. Praise the Lord. So the probability of <coughs> allowing this caustic tongue to slash and slice can rest with women. Probably. But I can't say that because today man wants to be like woman. Woman wants to be like man. We don't want to be who we are. Father is father. Mother is mother. And father and mother are needed. And we see this in the holy family. God could have done away with Joseph. And God speaks to Joseph in his confusion. The beauty with Joseph is he's a righteous man. And in his human righteousness, he thought the best way is to put Mary away. That was what he thought. But his righteousness, something within him began churning. And he allowed God to speak to him even in his sleep. The sleeping Joseph is awakened by God's word, saying, take Mary as your wife. Hallelujah. Take Mary as your wife. The child that she's bearing is conceived in the Holy Spirit. Jesus coming into family life sanctifies our family lives. Hallelujah. Don't be worried about the disgrace you could have caused at home. Jesus has come to sanctify us. To lift us out of the disgrace that we could have lived in till now. Maybe as a father you have never had respect or as a mother was never appreciated. There is one who always sees. Before him no creature is hidden. All of us are naked and laid bare to the eyes of one to whom we must render an account. And he keeps no account of our wrongs. But simply waits, waits to say how many times are we willing to accept his grace, his love, his mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Behave honorably. Allow this honor to be father and mother, to be seen in your lives by being united to Jesus and recognizing that the healthiness in your home reflected in society is reflected in society outside. All the disgrace and sinfulness, the sickness of our discord will only be seen magnified in the life around us. Therefore, let's examine ourselves and say, and let's listen to God's word through St. Paul who says, parents do not provoke your children, but bring them up in Christian discipline. Have a year for God. Mother Mary always had a year open to God and so did St. Joseph. They could listen to their child who stayed back in the temple and listen to him saying, did you not know I must be doing my father's work? But because they listened, the father worked upon this child, Jesus, at the age of 12. And the gospel says he went with Joseph and Mary and he was obedient to them. Luke 2, 51. 
The next verse 52 says the child Jesus increased in wisdom and years and in divine and human favor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't despair. Put your hope in this God. Recognize what is it in your home that prevents you from being a father or mother. What is the altar you could have built up? Is it God? How much have you turned away from the Trinitarian love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? God never abandons us. He comes to us. Jesus Christ said, I have come not to condemn this world, but in order that the world might be saved. Praise the Lord. I have come for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fourth to, to tenth, it is love of neighbor. We cannot love others around us as God wants us without the first aspect of being united to God in his love. Love of neighbors is a reflection of being united to God in his love. And what is this love of God? Sacrificial love. The ability to give and to give and to give always can only happen when we are united to God. And love is demanding, Christian love is demanding. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next commandment says, you shall not kill. You shall not kill. You shall not murder. Remember Jesus, as part of his passion, bruised and battered. Peter takes the sword. And he strikes off the ear of Malchus. And Jesus says, put your sword back into its sheath. Those who take the sword will perish by the sword. Matthew 26 verse 52. And let us remember, every action begins with a word. A word, it begins with a word in our mind, moves to the heart, and then becomes an action. I don't want you around me. Mom and dad, get lost from here. We will live better without you. When are you going to die? This is the hard reality of our lives today. Let us go and live separately there. Where? Wherever you go, if that is inside you, nothing can come out. Jesus has to come out. You shall not kill. Jesus takes us to the depth of this law. You have heard that it was said. To those of ancient times, you shall not murder. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with a brother or sister has already committed murder in their heart. Anger, envy, vengeance, hatred. Cain kills his brother Abel. It led into an action. And God asks, where is your brother? And Cain asks conveniently, am I my brother's keeper? God shows us the responsibility for everyone else. In this commandment, we are saying yes to life. Yes to life. God came to give us life. A Christian is life-giving through Jesus the life. In him was life. And this life was the light of all people. The Gospel of John says. In him, Jesus Christ was life. And this life was the life of all people. He died that we may rise to life with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you can see why suicide is wrong. The book of Job chapter 10 verse 12 says, In his hand is the life of every living thing. And in him is the breath of every human being. Praise the Lord. John 10.10, 10, Jesus Christ said, I have come 
that you may have life and life to its fullest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 John 10.10, 10, I have come that you may have life, life to its fullest. So we are responsible for each other's lives. What about the child in the womb? Today the womb has become a battleground. Let me remind every one of you, or rather God is reminding every one of us, that the cry of Jesus on the cross and that one of his prayers was Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? As you come down, verse 10 and 11, you will read these words. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near. And there is no one to help. A portion. Is this reality? Taken by Jesus. In that cry. Further down you will read, he did not abhor the afflictions of the afflicted, but heard when I cried. To break this power in those of us who have either unwittingly committed it or consciously committed it. Praise the Lord. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? God never forsakes. The gospel is a gospel of life, the good news. And if there is darkness for us in this area, there's an invitation for Jesus, from Jesus. Come, I want to take you back to that healing. Mother Mary allows the womb to be sanctified through the gift of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She conceives. Let God heal us and show us wherever we have failed. That in him we need never remain a failure, however hard it may hit us now. Hallelujah. It's exactly these areas that God wants to take us out from. Wherever we have unconfessed sin. If you have confessed it, could allow God to work upon us in this area to heal us hallelujah praise the Lord therefore you can see how other areas contraception why is it wrong why is it wrong we'll come to that next commandment hallelujah you shall not commit adultery praise the Lord you shall not commit adultery Jesus Christ came in human form, in a human body. Yes or no? In Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. St. Paul teaches us, as many of us who are baptized into Christ have been baptized into his life, into his own body, into his own blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God has come in Jesus Christ to restore us and to help us to live a chaste life. Sexuality is a gift from God and we have the male and the female. Both are wonderful and male and female he created us. And John Paul too reminds us male and female he redeemed us. Praise the Lord. Let's never forget that. Therefore it is not at all possible for man and man to seek marriage and woman and woman. I was wonderstruck by one of my friends in America who said nowadays whenever I receive an invitation, he was speaking of America, but I think this is true of all parts of the world. Whenever I receive an invitation for a wedding, I must see who is getting married, whether it's a man or a woman or two men or two women. Praise the Lord. There are some people who seek partners, marriage, live in and live out. You'll be shut out if you don't repent now. Living in and living out. Experimenting. And some others will say, eh, what is this? I'll buy one, I'll take two. Take two of what? Two in Satan's camp inside. I'll buy one, take two. What? 
you shall not commit adultery. Anyone who is married understands there's a mission for God. And what is this mission? Mission is not just to produce children. Let's first understand the purpose of our sexuality is to unite us with God. And that is why whether you're married or unmarried, priest or religious, you have the ability to allow God's power to make us what we really are every day. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we have the power to control everything. Not, uh, it's so difficult. How did Joseph do it? Think about it. Let's see the culture in which he lived it. Jewish culture. As a man, he should be taking on wives and wives and wives and having as many children as possible. God has broken this down and showed the meaning of the marriage covenant. Or in fact, the covenant itself, every covenant, religious, sister, or priest, the desire for being united with somebody is always there. And then we understand, we rise above this, based upon the call in which God has given us to remain united in that vocation, married husband and wife, with the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The ability to abstain. We are not pumped up hormone bags, are we? Are we? Hormone bags? Praise the Lord. If we are like that, then physics and chemistry can become disorganized in our bodies. Huh? That's why we need the Lord of physics and chemistry inside us. Praise the Lord. Am I saying something difficult? Is it difficult? Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Can the whole thunder hallelujah? hallelujah? I'm going to say it softly. I want to hear you say it loudly. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the whole thunder hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. So now God has given us glucose to wake us up with this praise. Hallelujah. Once again, hallelujah. hallelujah. He's giving us glucose with this praise. Hallelujah. hallelujah. The ability to praise is from him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Abortion, murdering other people with the tongue. Why were you born? Why were you born? Common refrain. Why was I born? Even before you were born, I knew you. And I consecrated you. And appointed you as a prophet. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Therefore, we must understand every life belongs to God. And this life that comes from God must bear fruit as God wants us. Praise the Lord. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit that you have from God and that you're not your own? You are purchased for a price, therefore glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and following. Hallelujah. You shall not steal. Do we steal? Does husband pinch from the wife's purse? Let me take a little bit. Huh? Or do you pinch in your office? There are some people who will travel second class and claim first class airfare club, club class, writing accounts. Some people are very good accountants at that, stealing. We steal, right? Even from God, we want to steal. Stealing away all his time. Mobile phone from morning to evening. 3G, 4G, 5G. No G in our lives. No God. Absolutely. Why I should give to that church? Why I should give there? Malachi 3.8 says, we even rob God from our tithes. We rob God of the time that he has given us. Everything has a time. Prayer, worship. Are we taking all of this lightly? Literally robbing others. And how we live our lives. Why should I pay tax? No need to pay tax. Praise the Lord. A Christian understands all of this and sees that even Jesus paid his tax. 
Matthew 17, 27, fulfilling for us for what we could have failed and reminding us the need to consider all of those around us and to be good to them too by sharing the goods and everything that God has gifted us. Praise the Lord. Next commandment says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Praise the Lord. For this I came into this world, to bear witness to the truth. And those who belong to the truth listen to my voice. Praise the Lord. John 18, 37. For this I came, to bear witness to the truth. Therefore, every oath, every promise, every vow I take. And if I'm a judge or a lawyer or an advocate, I bear witness to the truth, not only in these roles, but also now very important in how I handle information. There are many people today who turn WhatsApp into a scrap bin, this media. Media, journalism, all of this is so important and the commandment here is speaking of all of this, how we should be responsible and how we share information, anything. That person there did this to this church, ta 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 share anything. Destroy the reality, destroy the truth, gossip, slandering one another. It is not necessary always to be able to share the truth to with others when you need not do so God has not called you to do so for example what is a confessional secret remains a secret a secret of patient and doctor a lawyer and his client like this so many areas of our lives hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah bear witness to the truth speak the truth when you need to bear witness to the gospel be ready to stand up for Christ as the early people in the church, martyrs, through whose blood today we have the gift of Christianity spreading as it is, may not be as prolific as it needs to be, but however, we have received that salt, we have received that light, Jesus Christ himself, let us be a light to bear witness to the truth. Hallelujah. Wherever we have failed, we turn back to God. 9 and 10 says, shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not desire your neighbor's house or field, male or female. Praise the Lord. As we move into these commandments, we are moving into the very depth and heart of God. Where your treasure is, there your heart would also be. Matthew 6, 21. Where your treasure is, there your heart would also be. Luke 12, 15. Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in one's possessions. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings 21, 1 to 29, we read of King Ahab, how with his wife, and wife's malicious ways, they take away the field of a poor man called Naboth. This king who had so much of land desired this field for his garden, kitchen garden. And he, through his wife, allows false witnesses to be set up and get this man stoned and murdered. And they take away his field. Word of God warns us that God is open to the cry of his poor people. Hallelujah. Wherever we have had this desire for that of our eyes, the desire of our flesh, the pride in riches to conquer us, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. St. John warns us that this is not from God, but from the world. Let us turn away from all of this to God and seek his love and his healing 